بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. So alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, um, we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a great ni'mah, a great blessing um, that we are starting this journey, this 12-week journey inshallah, um, into the tafsir of Surah Qaf and Surah Al-Hujarat. Um, uh, as you all know, uh, one of the key things that we've been mentioning over the last few months is that we'll be starting a tafsir dars. And we kept mentioning that we'll have Sheikh Mustafa Shaybani with us inshallah. So it's taken a while, but alhamdulillah, we have the Sheikh um, with us for the next 12 weeks where he will be going through these two surahs. Uh, and then after this dars, uh, we'll have Isha at 8.30, and then we're going to have a dars in Arabic, um, which was also advertised. It's uh, some ahadith from Sahih al-Bukhari that the Sheikh will be going through after Isha, inshallah. So for those of you who know Arabic, uh, please do stay behind and benefit from that as well, inshallah. Just a very brief intro to the Sheikh. The Sheikh is, mashallah, ma'roof. He's known, hafidhahullah, uh, here in Manchester, doing durus in many masajid, Masjid Furqan, Masjid Sunnah, Didsbury Masjid Heritage, etc. So it's a great honor for us to have the Sheikh with us every Monday, inshallah, um, for the next 12 weeks. And then, inshallah, the plan is to carry on after that. But for those of you who aren't aware of the Sheikh, the Sheikh, mashallah, has, uh, Allah Mubarak, been in the, the field of da'wah for the last 30 years. He has a BA in Sharia, he has a Master's in Islamic Studies, a PhD in Islamic Finance, um, and has been yani, teaching and learning for uh, the most, yani, his, his whole life, alhamdulillah. So to have the Sheikh with us is a great ni'mah, as I said. The Sheikh is also um, doing a khutbah once a month here at the masjid. Um, so alhamdulillah, I really encourage you all to um, play close attention, to take notes, it's good to see. MashaAllah, many of the youngsters, Sheikh, we have the pens and notepads ready, MashaAllah. So uh, this is also a part of studying, is that we come prepared, we have our notepads, we have our pens, we're taking our notes, inshallah, and we're benefiting. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq. Jazakumullah khair, I'll pass it over to the Sheikh, inshallah. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صلِّ وسلِّم على عبدك ورسولك وحبيبك سيدنا محمد Hello everyone and welcome to this course in Tafsir in weekly class inshallah in Tafsir in this درس will give an introduction in several points the first one is just to remind myself and all of you is to of niyyah of talabul ilm that there is intention of talabul ilm if you go to any mosque to attend a lecture or lesson or dars about kitabullah tabarak wa ta'ala this is big honor that rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in sahih muslim said majtama'a qawmun fi baytin min buyutillah whoever people gather in house of allah tabarak wa ta'ala yatluna kitabullah wa yatadarasunahu baynahum recite the book of allah and they listen to the tafsir of book of Allah wa ta'ala illa nazalat alayhim as-sakina then the tranquility the sakina will descend upon them wa ghashiyatuhum ar-rahma and the mercy of Allah will cover them wa haffathum al-malaika and the angels also will attend this gathering so remind yourself that you are in ibada just as you pray you fast you go to hajj you do all these rituals also to attend a lesson about the book of Allah wa ta'ala, this is a type of ibadah. So every single second here, the malaika make dua for every one of us. Oh Allah, forgive him. Oh Allah, forgive her. Oh Allah, forgive him. So that's number one. Number two is the significance of learning the book of Allah wa ta'ala. You know, many Muslims they, alhamdulillah, they love to recite the book of Allah, wa some of them try to memorize some of the book of Allah. But the big problem among Muslims nowadays, they don't pay attention for the meaning. They don't attend lessons, lessons in tafsir, or read books about what does that mean. For them, it's enough to recite and this is a big problem, not here in many Muslim countries. Even for Arab people, 
because Quranic words and expression is in high level. Even for Arab people, they need to know the meaning of many words. But majority of Muslims, for them, it's enough. Recitation is enough. I would say here, and that's the first point, if you want to write down for this view, though, the key, the key point to understand the book of Allah Taala is to ask yourself, why do you recite the book of Allah? If you answer these questions, that's the key point. Why do you recite the book of Allah? What's the purpose behind this recitation? And people here, they will give you different answers. Majority of Muslims, they will say, we want reward. Because every single letter, Rasulullah said, every single letter has 10 good deeds. And we have more than 300,000 words in Quran. More than 300,000 words in Quran. 300,000 times 10, this is over 3 million. So every single khatma you recite, that's 3 million. So Muslims will say, I will become millionaire. Every single khatma, that's 3 million. Two khatmas, that six million, nine million, and so on. So, the ultimate goal for many Muslims is just to get the reward. Definitely, when you recite Quran, you'll get the reward. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in many ahadith the significance of recitation. And one day in Sahih Muslim, he said, Hadith Uqba ibn Amir, Rasulullah sallam in the gathering. And he said to the, his companions, أَيُّكُمْ يُحِبُّ أَنْ يَغْدُوَ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ إِلَىٰ بُطْحَانَ أَوْ إِلَىٰ الْعَقِيقِ Who want to go every single morning to a place called Bothan or al -Aqiq? It's a valley outside the Medina. فَيَغْدُوا مِنْهُ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ فَيَرْجِعُوا بِنَاقَتَيْنِ كَوْمَا وَيْنِ And when you go there every single morning, you'll have two big camels for free every single day camel for arab people that time is something very big just like bmw now when you have a car so suppose he said if you go every single morning to that place they will give you two bmw cars for free they said oh rasulullah every one of us want that then he said I will tell you something more important than that, more valuable than that. Go to the mosque and sit down and recite two verses of the book of Allah. It's better than two camels. Three better than three, four better than four, and so forth, so on. So there's a lot of a hadith about the rewarding. But my point here is, why Rasulullah encourage companions and us to recite? Because Quran is like, if you discover a treasure in the top of the mountain, and then you came back to the people and said, I saw a treasure, amazing. If you go there, you will be amazed. So people are lazy. They don't, want, they don't know this treasure. So then you will encourage them, whatever who go, I will give him this. This type of encouragement. When they go there, they will forget about the reward. That's the example of the Quran. When you know the meaning, you will forget about discounting the reward. Because you will discover treasure. Sometimes you recite one ayah, that ayah touch your heart, and then you will repeat it, and repeat it all the night. You don't care about this, this counting anymore because now you discover something more valuable, the meaning of the book of Allah. Because if they know the meaning, then reflection after that, it touches your heart. So the first reason for many Muslims is reward. I will say if they know the treasures and they discover the meaning, they will go to something beyond that. 
And the reward is always there. There's even more reward if you reflect upon the words of Allah. Reason number two. So number one, many Muslims, they want reward. Every single letter is ten deeds. Second, some Muslims, they recite Quran. They said, because we are Muslims. I am Muslim, that's my identity, so I should recite some of the Quran. So he recite Quran just because that's one of the... I'm a Muslim, so I should open the book of Allah for 10 minutes every single day. But there is no intention to know the meaning at all. It's enough for him to open, and they said, okay, that's, that's okay. Every single day, open the book of Allah. Number three, some people, they said, we recite for barakah. Absolutely, Quran is Mubarak. Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka Mubarak. Blessed book. But the problem here is the definition of Barakah for some people. For some Muslims, what they mean by Barakah, it means I want to recite a certain ayat, then it will protect me and my family from evil eye. That's all Barakah in their concepts. I want some certain ayat to protect me and my family from jinn. So for them, barakah is just this. That's why they always recite the ayat which is protect the people from evil eye or, or jinn or anything. So that's for them is, is the ultimate purpose of reciting Quran. And absolutely Quran is mubarak in everything. But they minimize that barakah. Reason number four, some people, they recite Quran occasionally, just when they feel depression, stress. Oh, I need to recite the book of Allah. They go to the masjid and recite, and may they cry, and then they feel that tranquility. Maybe they're crying and feel that tranquility, and that's it. They will close the book of Allah, and they will come back, after, after a while, when they feel depression again. So all these reasons, you can recite Quran for all these reasons. That's valid reasons. However, the ultimate reason, the key point to, end, to recite Quran, and when you recite Quran in this purpose, everything will change. Your relationship with Quran completely will change. The ultimate purpose is to recite Quran as a guidance. Huda, as a light, nur, as a furqan, distinguisher. If you recite Quran and you need guidance from this, that's the purpose of recitation, everything will change. Why everything will change? Because how can you get guidance from a kalam, a speech, you don't know the meaning? Can you get a guidance? Just like one, one day, for example, they said that a young boy, he graduated from the college and he traveled to seek knowledge in another country. At that time, there's just letters. There's no smartphones, no internet. So when he came to that place, after one month, his mother sent him a letter. But his mother, mother wrote the letter in different language. So he looked at the language, he just recognized the name of his mother. He's very happy, he was very happy, this is from my mom. But he doesn't, doesn't know what's the meaning. So he keep that letter. Another month, the mother sent the mother sent a letter again. Another letter. Oh, my mother again. I'm. So he look. He kissed that letter. He put it under the pillow. He's very happy that the mother the mother remind uh, remember him. After few months, another letter came. So he also. Now kiss that letter again. Then after that he decided to come back for a holiday. 
when he reached the place, he found out that his mother passed away. So he regret. How I don't know that? Then he remembered the letters. He brought it, and then he asked someone to translate that letters for him. In the first letter, oh my son, the doctor discovered that I have a serious illness, and may I will die just a few months. The second letter, oh, the doctor said it's really serious. If you can, please come. That after a few months, oh my son, now I'm in the deathbed. I forgive you. I wish I can kiss you before I die. And then she passed away. The problem here is he received letters. He loved his mom. He kissed that letters. He loved the letters, but he doesn't know the meaning. That caused him what's this consequences. We receive the Quran in Arabic language. Majority of Muslims, they don't know Arabic language. So how can they read these letters? How can they know what Allah need from us? Do you know that in our history, Muslims, oh, anyone who convert to Islam straight away, he will go and learn Arabic language. Not because Arabic is a language of certain race. No, because this is the language of the book of Allah. All our ulama in the past, majority of them non-Muslim, non-Arab. Imam Abu Hanifa is, is not from Arab. Bukhari, Tirmidhi, all these great scholars, even the biggest book in Arab grammar, the author is Sibawi, is not Arab. It's not Arab. The, big, the, 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 the most famous dictionaries in Arabic, Al-Qamus Al-Muhir, Taj Al-Arus, the author is not Arab. But they always want that connection with the book of Allah. So I would say, if you read Quran as a guidance, the first thing you look for, what does that mean? What does this message mean? then I can extract the guidance. So that's obviously the first question. Then that will encourage you to learn Arabic. That's the best way to understand the book of Allah. Wa I will encourage all the youth here, mashallah, young, youngsters here, if you want to open the door of the treasure of the book of Allah, learn Arabic language. And we live in a, in a time that now learning languages is very easy. A lot of apps, a lot of online classes. Some of our youth, they, they're interested in Chinese, Japanese, just to watch some enemies. Some they learn Spanish just to show or oh, in the school that, look, I know multiple languages. Okay, then Arabic language is the most important because it's the key of the book of Allah. So from right now, set that goal in your life to learn Arabic language. All this Durus Tafsir is alternative. But Arabic language is this is the, the best decision. So again, so we said that the, the ultimate purpose is to take Quran as a guidance. Is that right? Okay, now guidance, then want to know the meaning. Suppose now you open the Mus'haf in front of you. And you want to recite here, and the purpose is guidance. And another one next to you, he will open the Mus'haf, and his purpose is just reward. Look at the difference now. The one who wants reward, he will go fast. Alif Lam Mim, Thalika al Kitabu la Rayba fi, Udal il Muttaqin, Al Ladina Yuminuna bil Rayba, wa Yukimuna Salata, wa Mimma Razakna, whom you unfikun, wa Ladina Yuminuna bima unzila ilayka, wa Ma unzila min Kabrika, wa Bila Hirati, whom you unkinuna, Ula ikala, who dam in Rabbim, wa Ula ika whom will move Lihun. He'll go fast because he wants more letters, more reward. I want to finish quick. But the other person, no, I want guidance. He will stop in everything. He has two types of recitation. He has his word. I will recite every single day one juz, Then I will complete Quran in one month. But in the same day, he has another khatma just for the meaning. Alif, lam, mim. What does that mean? 
ذلك الكتاب when he say ذلك not هذا الكتاب he would raise a lot of questions questions like what this is now I will list to you some questions when you read Quran for guidance these questions will come to your mind if you know the meaning and I will list you also another questions even if you read from translation if you know Arabic the first question will come to you What's, what does that mean? The words. Even if you are Arab, Quran is in high level. What does that word mean? That's number one. What does that expression mean? You'll go across by some parables in the beginning of Baqarah. That's parable and there's a lot in Quran. What does that mean? You'll come across story. Guys, every single story in Quran, there is lessons for our modern time. Every single story. That's a key of reflection. If you read the story as a story in the past, and you don't ask yourself, what lessons I can derive to my modern time, you miss reflection of the Quran. Surah Yusuf is for us. Ad and Thamud, all of these stories for our modern times. We just need to reflect. Then he will ask, what about this story? What are the lessons I can derive? Then sometimes he will go, Allah said in the ayah, Alimun Hakim. Sometimes Ghafoorul Rahim. Sometimes Ala Kulli Shayin Qadir. Why he choose these two names to be the end of this ayah? What's the connection between the ayah and these two names? And why these two specific names? That's question. Because Allah encourages us to ask. Sometimes you read Alimun Hakim. But sometimes Hakimun Alim. Why he changed the order? Why sometimes Alim first and sometimes Hakim first? What's the purpose behind that? So every time he just encourages you to ask. So the one who needs guidance, he always has a, a notebook next to him when he recites Quran. Me personally, I have over 20 notebooks, big one, just about reflection. Whatever I pray at home, always notebook next to me. Because especially when I pray, a lot of questions come to my mind questions of reflections because if you want guidance you have to ask definitely and that what make this journey amazing that you always think about something according to according to kitab Allah wa ta'ala so that's the guidance if you want guidance then this is the ultimate goal when you understand this then reflection what does reflection mean? Tadabbur. Allah wa ta'ala said that the purpose of this Quran is to reflect. Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayati. It's a book they sent to you and it's a blessed book. And the purpose behind that is to reflect upon its verses. Liyadabbaru ayati. In another ayah, he said, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Why they don't reflect upon Quran, contemplate upon the Quran? Or maybe their hearts, there's a locks in their hearts. Another ayah, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Why they don't contemplate upon the book of Allah? They will never find any book like this book. So this, it's all encourages us to reflect. What does reflect mean? تَدَبُّر in Arabic is from to go to the end of the meaning. You know the meaning? What's behind the meaning? Behind the meaning, sometimes deep meaning. 
behind the meaning, sometimes the meaning related to your modern time. Behind the meaning is action and behavior. So you reflect, it means you act upon these verses. And this action sometimes by your heart, sometimes by your bodies. For example, if you read Ayatul Kursi, is there any commands in Ayatul Kursi? There's no commands. Allah talk about himself. So what's the reflection? Your heart reflect. It means your heart now. This ayah touch your heart that you realize the glorification of Almighty Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So that gives you humbleness. So that's the guidance. So recite Quran as a guidance. Everything will change. If you don't know Arabic, and you go to translation, that's also a lot for you. But you need to make effort. Every single week, at least one hour, listen to English translation or English tafsir lesson. Every single week, that at least, or in Urdu, in any language. That's, that's the minimum thing you have to do for the book of Allah. Wa okay, now you know the translation. You know the meaning now of the words, of the expressions? Ask the questions. This story, what's the lessons to me? This parable, what can I derive to me? Everything, it's this book talk to you, talk to me. So that's the point, which is the purpose of reading the book of Allah. The point number three, the book of Allah, when Allah descended this book to the Prophet this book was in different order. We have two different orders of the Quran. Number one, the revelation order. And number two, the compilation order. Revelation order, it means how this revelation came first to Rasulullah start with Iqra. Ya ayyuha al-muddathir, ya ayyuha al-muzzammil, and so on. And this type of order starts with Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Five verses from Surah Al-Alaq. And end with a short surah. Anyone here knows which the last surah revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Go on, yes. Ida jaa'a nasrullahi wal fatah. So, from the revelation order, the first ayat is Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq Khalaq al-insana min alaq Iqra' wa rabbuka al-akram alladhi allama bil qalam allama al-insana ma lam ya'alam And what's the last verses in that order? Ida jaa'a nasrullahi wal fatah During 23 years of the life of Rasulullah sallam, this order Now we go to the, the other order, which is the compilation, it means in the end of Rasulullah, uh, the life of Rasulullah Jibril used to came down every single Ramadan. That's why Rasulullah made i'tikaf in the last 10 nights. And Jibril reviewed with Rasulullah the last revelation. And in the year 10, Jibril spent 29 nights with Rasulullah review the last, this last order, compilation order which we know now, start from Surah Al-Fatiha and end with Surah An-Nas. So we have two orders, compilation, the, the, the revelation and the compilation. The question here is, why there is two orders? Why Quran not revealed from the beginning, Al-Fatiha, Al-Baqarah, Al-Imran, Al-Nisa, why well, it's in different order and in the end of the life of Rasulullah he told them this order which now we know right now. Anyone has any answer for this? Just because there is a lot of youngsters and make, him, make, make them awake to ask them some questions. What's the wisdom behind the first order? That the first thing is Iqra. You know Al-Baqarah is from the end. Yes. Very good, very good. MashaAllah. 
relevant to the consequences, to the time. That's a very important point. Then when Quran revealed to Arab that time, there is a lot of pro main problems. Quran descended to Rasulullah to solve these problems. There is idolatry, there is, there is a, they worship idols, there is a lot of problem in social dimension, in moral dimension, political dimension, economic dimension, a lot of problems. So Quran descend gradually depend to the time that, for example, they used to drink alcohol a lot, all the Arab that time. If the Quran revealed and the first verse is don't drink alcohol, they will not stop drinking alcohol because they, they, they're, that, that's your, their life. So a drink alcohol came late in Revelation. But instead of that, drinking alcohol is just a symptom. The root for the problem is lack of knowledge of Allah. Wa that's why he start with the knowing Allah. Wa if they know Allah properly, then they can leave everything for his sake. That's why it's relevant for that time. In Mecca, he talked with some people. They are not the people of the book. But when he came to Medina, there's different audience. So that's why we have Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran and Nisa Al-Ma'idah debate with the people of the book. This is in Medina. So there is a lot of reasons for, is it relevant for the time? Because of the purpose of da'wah? Because of the audience? Because also this is go gradually, just for every time something happen, event happen, the Qur'an descend to Rasulullah Wasallam. So that, that's some of the reasons. We just mentioned some, we don't go in depth in that. Another question, that even in Qur'an, the Quraysh arise, why Qur'an, Allah Taala, He revealed Qur'an to His Prophet during 23 years. Torah and Injil, they revealed to Musa and Isa once, in one time. However, Qur'an, He revealed to Rasulullah gradually. Even the people of Quraysh قالوا وقالوا لولا نزل عليه القرآن جملة واحدة. Why Quran is not like the previous books? Again, the question here, why? Because Allah Taala want Quran to be a solve of our problems. Something happened, problem in Mecca with Rasulullah and companions. After a while, Quran revealed to Rasulullah Sallam. Then they will recite, become they they live with the Quran. Also in our time, if you find any problem and you go and recite some ayat, you say, oh, it seems it just revealed right now. So anyway, we have two type of order. The first order of the revelation and the second order. We'll focus on this second order, which is compilation one, which start with Fatiha, Baqara, Ali Imran, and end with, with Surah Al-Nas. We have also the second, the next point, we have to know that Quran, as we said, revealed 23 years. Some of Quran revealed in Mecca and some revealed in Medina. I want you to write down this Mecca period and Medina period. This is for the first order, revelation. Rasulullah sallam, he received the revelation when he was 40 years old. And he passed away when he was 63 years old. It means what's the length of prophethood? How many years? 23 years. Prophethood, 23 years. How many of these 23 in Mecca? What do you think? 13. Very good. So 13 in Mecca and 10 in Medina. Okay, now, the majority of Qur'an revealed in Mecca or in Medina? It seems Medina because Baqarah, Ali Imran, and Nisa, Al-Ma'idah. 
But the fact is the majority, actually the vast majority of Quran has revealed in Mecca. And only less than 30 surahs revealed in Medina. One day Abdullah ibn Abbas, he asked Ubayy ibn Ka'b, Bayyub Nukab, one of the greatest Sahaba, is expert in Quran. Abdullah ibn Abbas, one of the youngest Sahaba, so he asked Ubay, how many surahs revealed in Mecca and how many in Medina? So Ubay said, 27 surahs revealed in Medina and the rest revealed in Mecca. So 27 in Medina and 87. So around 90 surahs revealed in Mecca. So majority revealed in Mecca. Now look at the surprise now. The majority of ahkam is revealed in Medina. Do you know that the hijab became obligatory for women after 19 years of prophethood? 19 years. Do you know that Hajj become obligatory in the end of the prophethood? Do you know that prohibition of alcohol is came after more than 16 years of prophethood? Do you know that fasting Ramadan is become obligatory after 15 years of prophethood? Inheritance, this is in the late of revelation. A lot of rules, ahkam, revealed to Rasulullah Sallam very late. Then why the majority of Quran revealed in Mecca? Then what is in that majority of the Quran? If the rules is in Madani surahs, then what about the Mecca surahs? Talk, talk about what? Taqwa, Aqida, Jannah and Nar, the Day of Judgment. Yeah. A lot of stories, majority of the stories is in the Mecca Quran. The stories between the prophets and their nations, it means the story between Haqq and Batin is in Mecca. The point here is. Quran taught us that if you want to solve the problems, don't look at the symptoms. Go beyond that and look at the roots. And the roots of any problems is just disease in the heart or disease in the mind. Someone who thought there's a problem in intellectual aspects or spiritual aspects. If you change his mindset, he will change everything from that symptoms. If his heart became sound, then everything became sound. That's the method of the Quran. That's why he focused on this, then the Sahaba, when they receive these commands, the straight away, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا You know the woman, when the ayat of hijab revealed to Rasulullah they straight away just take any clothes and they make hijab. They are ready because their hearts full of love of Allah. I say this to every single parent, every single teacher. If you don't like some behaviors of your uh, children or your students, don't focus on the symptoms. Oh, my daughter doesn't like hijab. Her hijab is not appropriate. My son is lazy in salah. Sometimes he prays, sometimes. That's just symptoms. The problem is lack of love of Allah. Focus on that. Try to bring them in that. Talk to them about the names of Allah. If they love Allah and His Messenger, وسلم, all these problems they will solve very easily. So focus on the names of Allah and tell them the seerah of Rasulullah in a way that they will love their religion. After that, 
instead of they wear hijab and they don't know why we wear hijab. Because they, the, the, the fundamental of Islam, they don't have this. What they know, I'm Muslim, so I should wear hijab. Why? It's just because my parents said that. It's something obligatory. I don't know why. These questions, it's just there's identity crisis. So the methodology of Quran from Mecca to Madani is this. Build that relationship with Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Last example in this point. Do you know when Rasulullah Sallam uh, start prophethood in Mecca, there were 360 idols around the Kaaba. Do you know that the Prophet ﷺ used to pray there and the idols still there? After 20 years when he conquered Mecca, he smashed that idols in one day and no one say anything. Because he broke the idols in their hearts before. So he doesn't look at the symptoms. If he broke in the first day, they will build another. But he broke them in their hearts, in their minds. Then, now they are ready to receive this message. That's why we have two orders. I mention this because this course will choose two surahs. One surah is from Mecca period and one surah is from Madani period. Just to taste the flavor of Mecca period surahs and flavor of Madani period surahs. Surah Qaf is from Mecca surahs. You'll find that there is a distinguish between Madani and Mecca. Madani has, they have a similar themes in general. It's build your relationship with Allah and the day of judgment. But in Madani so, Mecca surahs, they will focus more on the day of judgment, on the Jannah and Nar, on the proof that Rasulullah is the Prophet. But Madani Surah, they will focus more on commands and how can we arrange our society and the problems between Muslims and how can we solve these problems. So we have Surah Qaf and we have Surah, surah Al-Hujurat. So they, 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 they present the, the different types of this Madani and Mecca Surahs. Mecca Surahs and Madani Surahs. So this is the introduction. I will end my introduction before I start now, just present, represent Surah Qaf, that we have to make effort to be close to the book of Allah. Ulama mention that if you want to test your relationship to Quran, there's some criteria, some standards. I want you to write this down and ask yourself, where are you? In which stage of these stages? So the first stage of your relationship with Quran should be you should learn how to recite Quran properly. That's number one. So ask yourself, can you recite Quran properly? If not, then start your journey. Alhamdulillah, nowadays we have a lot of online classes, a lot of WhatsApp groups, a lot of masajid, they open their doors just MashaAllah, in Manchester, there is a lot of, MashaAllah, especially women teachers, they, MashaAllah, dedicate themselves just to bring this knowledge. So go and join one classes. And your intention, I want to recite the Quran as it revealed. And this journey will not take just a few months, you will master this. Tajweed is not difficult. It's a very easy journey, but you have to start with this. Because in the day of judgment, imagine you will come and Allah give you long life, give you capability to learn a lot of languages. You went to school and you learn math, science, geography, philosophy, many subjects. And you miss to learn how to read the book of Allah properly. What a big loss. So you said, what do you say to your Lord? He give you everything. I spend my life to learn all the languages, all the sciences, all. But I miss something, learning how to recite Quran properly. 
So that's number one. Stage number one to recite Quran properly. Stage number two. When you recite Quran properly, then now teach others to recite Quran properly. خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ The best among you, the one who learn Quran and teach it. So if you know, go to your siblings, to your friend in the school, colleagues at university, co-workers, make initiative. Said, who want to learn how to recite? Alhamdulillah, I have course for six months. Now I expert in how to recite Quran. I will teach you. Spread this knowledge. Imagine if you teach them and whenever they recite those ayat, any time, Allah will give you their rewards. That's why our scholars said the best thing to do is to teach a child Surah Al-Fatiha. Why? Because when that child becomes adult, every single rak'ah he will recite Fatiha, it will be in your reward. So number one, recite Quran properly. Second, teach others. Number three, now you have to have a word of recitation. Khatma. It's highly recommended to complete Quran every single month. It means one juza every single day. One juza in Mus'haf Medina is 20 pages. 20 pages we have five prayers, just four pages every single time. So every, sing, so every single month, I will recite or complete the Quran. Because otherwise this is Hajr, Hajr al-Quran. How can a person spend entire day without Quran? That's the ruh of our soul. You know, we need meals for our bodies. We need meals for our souls. And the Quran is one of the most important. So number three, set a recitation. Either complete every month, every two months, every six months, but you have to read Quran every single day. Number four, try to memorize some of the Quran. It's a big honor that Allah Ta'ala, He make memorization easy for us. Just one ayah is something very big. When I ask a child how many surah you do, he said, he say with shyness, it's just juz'amma. Don't say just juz'amma. One surah in Quran is something very big. One verse in Quran. Because one verse you can go one level in Jannah. So try to increase your memorization. And Quran has equation. It's easy to memorize. However, easy to forget. Do you know why? Because easy to memorize, because if that's not the case, no one will memorize the book of Allah. It's so heavy. But easy to forget, because Allah wants to say, who is, recognize that he has something very valuable in his heart. That he should carry on and repeat it, repeat it. It's not anything else. So that's why easy to memorize, that's why focus on revision you want to start your journey. Number five, which is more important than the previous points, to know the meaning of what you recite, the meaning of the Quran, either by translation or learn Arabic, because that's the purpose. Number six, which is more important than the previous points, is to act upon the Quran. If you do the point number six and you miss the five points, you'll be in Jannah al-Firdaus. If you act upon the Quran, if you behave according to the Quran. But the, these points is increase your Iman. But the most important thing is this act upon the Quran, reflect upon the Quran. So that's six points, ask yourself, where are you? In which stage? I will end my lecture here. We we'll start with Surah Qaf, which is Makki or Madani Surah? Makki Surahs. Surah Qaf is Makki Surahs, 45 verses. 
It's surah number 50 in the order of compilation of the Quran. This surah, why we choose this surah? Because Rasulullah used to recite this surah when there is a big audience. What does that mean? He used to recite Surah Qaf in Surah in Salatul Jumu'ah. Salatul Jumu'ah, sometimes Sabih, وهل أتاك حديث الغاشية؟ غاشية, sometimes Al Jumu'ah, Al Munafiqun, sometimes Qaf اقتربت الساعة وانشق القمر. So he used to recite Surah Qaf in Salatul Jumu'ah, number one. Number two, that's more amazing. He used to make the khutbah, the entire khutbah, Surat Qaf. The theme of the khutbah is just Surat Qaf. That one of the ladies among the Ansar, she said, we were neighbor of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi for two years. And I memorized Surat Qaf because Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi used to recite it a lot as a khutbah. Can you imagine? Big audience, Surat Qaf is the khutbah, the content of the khutbah. Number three, Rasulullah used to recite Surat Qaf fil Eidain. When there is Eid Atha or Eid Fitr, he recite Surat Qaf. Number four, Rasulullah used, used to recite frequently in Salatul Fajr. In Salatul Fajr, in Salatul Jumu'ah. In Jumu'ah itself as a theme on content of Jumu'ah. And in Salatul Eidain, it means something very, very important. Because it's a strong reminder. In Surat Qaf, is a strong reminder of the Day of Judgment. The main theme here is the Day of Judgment. But in Surat Qaf specifically, he will take you in a journey. From since you create that, since Allah Taala created you, and He will told you that He knows everything about you. Whenever you whisper, any word it will be recorded, any thought, any action, any move, and He will go through when the death come to us, and after that to move to the the land of the day of judgment, and then to Jannah or Nar. We ask Allah to be from among Ahlul Jannah. So in a journey which is in a strong rhythm, that's why Surat Qaf is all the end of ayat is so strong. In Tajweed we have what we call Huruful Qalqala. Who knows Huruful Qalqala here? Yes, five letters. Qutb Jad. Qaf Ta. Ba. Jim Dal. Why this qalqala? Because when you stop in it, you say وَجَاءَ الْحَقُّ الطه. Very strong letters. حديد إد. قريب أطيط Look, very strong letters. Surat Qaf, full of this. All the ends, vast majority of the ends is in huruf al-qalqala. Why? To make that rhythm it's just to emphasize the significance of the Day of Judgment. Even he chose the Qaf to be the first letter. The Qaf is a strong letter. And three, four times in Surah, you will stop like this. Bil haqq Qaf Look, if, if you don't know the meaning, you'll pay attention. What's going on here? That's why this is the, the opening letters in Quran that the people of Quraysh, of Arab, they astonished by this. What's this? They never start their speech with letters. But Quran did because Quran is unique. And when they, Rasulullah recite as this, long vowel. So if you don't know any meaning, Qaf, you'll pay attention. Just by this. وَالْقُرْآنِ الْمَجِيدِ Look at this. إِدْ Then you will, oh. So that's the, 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 the rhythm of Surah Qaf itself. It's something, even if you don't know Arabic, you'll see something here. You just grab your attention. Finish? Okay. So next time, inshallah, we'll start with Surah Qaf. 
And inshallah, I will try to do some main points that you write that main point, inshallah. Sometimes I will ask you in the end just a summary of that, inshallah. Allahu alam wa sallallahu ala abdi rasuli Sayyidina Muhammad, alhamdulillahi rabbil alam.